All right, good morning, church. Good Welcome. Morning. This good is morning. the last day of January. Uh, we're really happy that we can gather together to worship this morning. Um, yeah. Uh oh, actually, I just wanted to say before we begin, um, I made a mistake. Pastor Iggy is coming back next Sunday, not this Sunday. Uh, so we'll 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 have some welcome festivities for him and Anna and Zoe next week. Anyways, let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you that you gather us again this morning. We thank you that you are good and that your love endures forever. Would you be with us and would you focus our attention on you as we worship and praise you? Amen. I'll hand it over to Adam. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the no snow weather that was supposed to come. So easy drive to school for me and for people to, to go to work. So let's start worshiping the Lord today as we sing Christ Be All Around Me. Above and below 
sing what the Lord has done in me.
All right, let's say together our offertory verse now. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. So we just thank you continually for the offerings that you do give, and we appreciate all the sacrificial giving that we do in response to God's generous gifts to us. If you would like to give, again, you can check us out online or drop off a mail or mail and check in. Now, we just want to welcome everybody this morning. So we welcome you and we say peace to each of you. Jesus says, my peace I leave with you, I, peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. So you may unmute yourself and we can say peace to one another. Peace. 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 Yeah, you need to be closer. Peace. 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 Yes, thank you, everybody. Peace to you. Uh, just a reminder, I did make a mistake. We had, um, I think he's not coming back today. He's coming back next Sunday. So we'll have a welcome for him then. Just a reminder about uh, what we shared about last week about supporting uh, Pastor Nasser Gill and his family. So you can see them there in the picture. Again, we are taking offering, special offering to the Benevolent Fund. If you are giving through PayPal online, there is a spot where you can write down. It says, like, uh, indicate which fund or your offering number. So you can uh, put in the fund, Benevolent Fund, in there if you want to give a specific gift to that. Uh, we do want to try to raise uh, $50,000 into the Benevolent Fund in order to be able to get this process going. So we have a bunch of paperwork already, but we have to... We have to get the money to show our commitment. And then there will also be um, a need to invite people to help out and be part of a team. Uh, once, if, they, if they're able to get approved and we're praying for that too, uh, then, then we will have to have a team ready to support the family. And so you can come in contact with me or uh, last week we, you met Dixon so you, with him as well. And we will be coordinating that team to support the Gill family once they're able to come here. Uh, just And the rest of the announcements are just our regular announcements about uh, regular meetings. REC Kids Connect on Sundays at 1030. Again, would love to have you join. We've got the kindergarten and pre-K prayer group as well as elementary prayer groups on Wednesday. Um, youth, oh, ooh, sorry. sorry. Um, youth group, we have... Um, uh, we have our study, I think, yes, we'll be doing uh, a study on... Uh, Friday, and we have young adults and adult small groups, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please contact us if you would like to join one of those groups. Now let's say together the Apostles' Creed, which reminds us of our faith and the greater story of the Bible. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we're going to ask Emma to say the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Glory you, to you O Lord. Lord. Jesus also gave them another example. He asked, can a blind person lead another blind person? Won't they both fall into a pit? The student is not better than the teacher, but everyone who is completely trained will be like their teacher. Why do you call me Lord and still don't do what I say? 
Some people come and listen to me and do what I say. I will show you what they are like. They are like a man who builds a house. He digs down deep and sets it on a solid rock. When a flood comes, the water rushes against the house, but the water can't shake it. The house is well built. But here is what happened when people listen to my words and do not obey them. They are like a man who builds a house on soft ground instead of a solid rock. The moment the river rushes against the house, it falls down. It's completely destroyed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. Okay. So, today... We're going to start off with uh, activity. Now, how many of you have ever done an obstacle? Wait, wait, wait. Go back, go back, go back. Okay. After the first round, there you go. How many of you have ever done an obstacle course? Okay, we're going to do an obstacle course today in our house. Okay, Tabitha is going to demonstrate for us. Where's Tabitha? She's not here. All right, here we go. So Tabitha's going to explain to us what the steps are. Oh, she is? Oh, I thought she was coming. We apologize for our slight technical delays. <laughs> I bet you haven't heard a sermon that starts with a lot of blah blah blah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tabitha, shh, everybody be quiet, and Tabitha's gonna explain to us. All right, so in this obstacle course, we will need to carry a bead or a spoon. I'm going to stand on these chairs, step off the chairs, and go through them without letting the bead drop. If the bead drops, I start again. And oh, you start again? Yeah. Okay, just, oh, my goodness. <laughs> just wait. Shh. Now I'm going to walk through here without touching the mat. Then I'm going to run over here to the hole and I'm going to drop the bead and the spoon inside the bucket here. Okay. No, However, okay. it isn't as simple as that. No. So I'm going to do it now. But what am I going to do it with? A blindfold. A blindfold. Okay. And a baby. And a, baby. <laughs> a blindfold and a baby, everybody. <laughs> Good luck to me. All right. Here are your meat and spoon. I will in me. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go to your right. Can I have the bead and the spoon? Here's the spoon. The bead is on the spoon. Okay, just give me instructions. All right, go forward. You're at the chair. Step out of the chair. That's on the chair. This is the chair. You're the end. Now step off Oh, this is so dangerous. Now step off the chair. Okay, go. Now you're hitting the next chair. Okay, you're on the next chair. Go. to be blindfolded how well do you think we would do if i was blindfolded and tabitha was blindfolded huh what do you guys think <laughs> we're not gonna actually do it this time 
we're not going to do it right now. But what do you guys think? How would I do if I was blindfolded and Tabitha was blindfolded? How many people think I would finish the course? You can put up your hands. Without hurting yourself. Without hurting myself. <laughs> No. All right, we're gonna switch. Mute that one. Okay, we're gonna switch. Okay. <laughs> I'm myself, Dad. All right. So, next slide. Have you guys ever played a blindfold game? How did you feel when you were blindfolded? What is it like? Oh, I'm still having trouble seeing right now. I'm like blurry. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Dada. <laughs> Next slide. Can you guys hear me? Are we okay? Yeah. Oh, my question, yes. My question was, do you think how do you think it would have gone if I was blindfolded and Tabitha, who was giving the instructions, was also blindfolded? Probably not very well, right? I mean, we could memorize the course maybe a little bit, um, but even then, who knows, right? I'd be crashing into lots of things. Wow, my glasses, my eyes. Whoa. Sorry, I'm just having like double vision at the moment. Okay. Well, today, today, in our gospel passage that Emma read so well for us, Jesus asks a question. It's a rhetorical question, a question um, that you know that everybody understands what the meaning is or the uh, the answer is is quite obvious, right? He says. Can the blind lead the blind? What is the answer? No. Right? What happens when the blind lead the blind? You're going to crash. You're going to fall. I mean, I had trouble, but I was able to get to the end because it was a sighted person leading me blindfolded. But if it's the blind leading blind, who knows how that would have gone, right? Just crashing all over the place, bumping into the wrong stuff, dropping the bead all the time. Right? Jesus says, can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? You can't do it. Next slide, please. And why is he talking about this? Well, Jesus says, the student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like the teacher. When are we like blind people leading other blind people? When are we like that? When we don't understand when we give advice out of a place of lack of knowledge. Now, if you ask Rachel, I have a tendency to talk as if I know what I'm talking about. You know, we'll be, she said it's very true, I could hear her yell that. Um, so like, we'll talk about stuff and um, even if I don't really know that much about the subject, I'll answer in a way that seems very convincing that I seem to know what I'm talking about. But if you really probe me, I would be like, well, I don't, I don't really know, you know, or I would look it up. But if we were to follow what Josh says in fields that I'm not an expert in, that would be like blind leading the blind, right? If we were doing stuff that I wasn't familiar with, that I wasn't comfortable with, you know, if you ask Josh for a medical opinion, that's a really bad idea. That would be definitely like blind stabbing the blind or something like that. <laughs> it's just not good because I don't know anything about that. I'm not a teacher. I'm not even a student. I didn't take biology uh, at the end of high school. I only took it up to grade 11. And, uh, and I definitely didn't take it. Yeah, ask Athen instead. <laughs> ask a doctor. Um, ask a nurse. You know? I don't know anything about biology. Don't ask me. If you do, it's like blind leading blind. So, as followers of Jesus, Jesus tells us that the student is not above the teacher. The student can't be leading others. You and I, if we are not well informed, if we're just really bad students following Jesus, we can't lead others. We can't give people advice about what it means to know Jesus. 
if we don't know him, right? Because if we don't know him, if we haven't experienced him, if we don't read his Bible, if we don't listen to him through prayer, if we don't experience his presence, how can we tell anybody about following Jesus? We don't know anything. Then we're like the blind leading the blind. We'll fall into a pit. The only problem with that is that that pit could be an eternal pit, separation from God. The blind lead the blind. Jesus says, instead of being blind leading the blind, you must be a student who follows the teacher. Jesus is the teacher. Jesus, his word, the Bible, teaches us. The spirit that he's given to us teaches us about obedience, about confession of our sins, about following God every day. If we follow Jesus, then we will see. The Bible actually talks a lot about blind, blindness and sight, both in the physical sense as well as in the spiritual sense. Today, I believe in Time with Abba, we copied about um, Jesus healing two blind men, giving them their sight. But it's not just about them seeing in the real world, but actually about them also receiving spiritual sight to know that Jesus has the power to heal. They have that experience. And when they have that experience, they can share that they've been healed to people and tell them, this is the one. He, he, could he be the Messiah? They can share about Jesus. They can follow after him and grow in their knowledge and experience that Jesus gives. So, don't be blind leading the blind. Be a student of Jesus, following his example. Following his example. Now, we need to be trained up to be like Jesus. Paul actually in 1 Corinthians, he, he says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. We all need to follow Christ's example, but we can also follow the example of each other who are imitating Christ. Right? We can hear each other's stories of how we've experienced God and how we've heard him through scripture. And through the lens of the Holy Spirit and scripture, we can grow. For those of you taking the Experience in God course, one of the things that it talks about is how we can hear from God. We can hear from him through prayer and listening. We can hear him through scripture and through circumstances and through the church. The church is part of that. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Jesus. We need to be trained up to be built up. Many of you are students or have been students very recently. You've been trained up. You've been learning. My sister, my younger sis, youngest sister, uh, she is a, an English language learner's teacher, an educator, and she's actually doing a degree right now. And I helped her write a paper last night, actually, um, or helped edit her paper on, on, on reflections of her her uh, being a, an educator of adult language learners. And so it's very interesting just thinking about how she works to create a space for her students to learn well, to experience the language, not just to learn the ideas of it, but to practice it and to get to know each other and to feel comfortable and to develop community. Very interesting. Let's be trained up to be like Jesus. Because Jesus says in verse 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my word and put them into practice, I will show you what they are like. And then he talks about these builders. But the first thing is that we have to have is that warning. If we're going to be blind leading the blind, if we're not actually going to follow Jesus, if we're not going to listen to him, then guess what? We could even call him Lord. We could even say, Jesus, you are my Lord, but with our lips and not with our lives. And guess what? Jesus says in verse 49, the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built his house on the ground without a foundation. We'll have nothing. It gets swept away. That's what blind leading the blind is like. If we don't build up a relationship with Jesus, if we don't allow him to teach us, what are you learning from Jesus? How are you allowing him to speak? How are you asking him to remove your blindness? 
like the two blind men, just desperately calling out to him, Jesus, heal us! Are you asking Jesus to heal you? Are you asking Jesus to help you to see? Not just to see things the way that you want to see, but to actually have your eyes, your spiritual eyes made new so that you can see things the way that he sees them. The more that we read scripture, the more that we soak in God's presence, the more that we listen to the Holy Spirit's guidance in our life, the more that we share in our experiences of God with others in the church and hear other people's experiences, the more that all these things happen, the more that we can be trained up to be like Jesus, that we can grow in what Bishop Silas likes to call Christ-likeness. Do you want to be like Jesus? Jesus says, everyone who is fully trained will be like the teacher. So let's get training. This year's uh, part of the four-year cycle is about raising up disciplers. And being discipled, being a discipler, is about being trained in the way of the teacher, is about imprinting lives with the teacher's DNA. We want to be trained up to be like Jesus. <laughs> tell yourself or tell your family members, I want to be trained up to be like Jesus. I want to be trained up to be like Jesus. Do you really want to be trained up to be like Jesus? I hope so. I hope so because this is so important. This is so important. We can call him Lord, but Jesus might not recognize us if we don't follow him. If we just say it with our lips, but we don't live it out each day by day, following after him. So let's be trained up to be like Jesus. Now, how can you do that? I mean, joining a, a small group, you know, having time with Abba together in prayer, uh, Bible study, coming and joining the services. If there are classes, learning in those class, in class environments. All these things help us to grow. They stretch us. Proverbs talks about iron sharpening iron. That when we help one another, when we are in community with each other, we can be like iron sharpening iron. We can make each other sharper. We can hone each other in our following of Jesus. None of us has it all figured out. I don't have it figured out. I'm the pastor. But maybe I have more experience than you in some areas. You know, I have kids. Some of you don't have kids. So I have experience of following Jesus while trying to figure out how to raise kids. <laughs> I don't say I'm good at it, but I have some experience there. I've been married for quite a while. <laughs> Hello, my dear. And, uh, and so I have some experience that I can share with others. Rachel and I can share, you know, we've done premarital counseling for a few couples and we can encourage them and share our own struggles. Not that we are perfect, we're working through plenty of things ourselves, but because we've journeyed and we've experienced God in certain ways, we can share about those things and therefore we can train others. Lent is coming soon. And when Lent happens, we're going to have a 40 day prayer through this desire in your hearts whether it's asking the Lord to show you, oh Lord, I want to be trained up. I want to be discipled by somebody. Or if it's asking the Lord, Lord, should I be a discipler? Should I be trained up as a discipler and, and go journey alongside somebody else so I can share what you've done in my life? I love that song that Athen led, what you've done for me. We can share that. That's part of our story. And the more that we experience of God, the more that we have to share and offer to others whether it's around our finances or education, family, marriage and dating, uh, all these things. 
when we pray and we seek the Lord, we have the opportunity to share our story and our experience of Him with others. And they can grow in their knowledge and be trained up to be more like Jesus, just as we are. Last slide, please. <clears throat> My last thought is this. The way that we do this is by hearing Jesus' words and putting them into action. Belief is not simply about listening and then acknowledging, yes, that's a good idea. You know? Yes, that's a good idea doesn't actually change my life. Yes, that's a good idea just sort of puts it into a box. But I don't have to do anything about it. And that's something that I was very good at growing up. I was very good when I was a teenager, when I was in university. I was very good at saying, oh, that's really good. You know, I should do something about it. And then walking away, but never doing anything about it. Taking advice and acting as if I cared when all I cared about was doing my own thing. When we encounter Jesus' words, they ought to change us. If the, there's no transformation, if your life is not changed, if you just say, oh, that's a nice idea, Jesus, and then you go back on to your own life without doing anything in response to his word, it means that you don't really believe. And so Jesus gives us this parable. Any, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. It's a little bit more serious than those kids songs that we sing, you know, don't I don't know what to, uh, I can't remember what the song is actually. <laughs> I'm just completely blanking right now. But it's like building your house on the shore, right? Building your house on the sand or building your house on the rock and like, oh, and then it, like, you know, the rain wash it away. And we sort of, it's sort of fun song kind of in actions. I don't know if we have ever sung those things with the kids or whatever. But I grew up singing these kinds of songs, you know, the house and then the rains come down and the floods came up and stuff like that. But the house stood still. Or the house washed away. And we don't really think about that. But Jesus here, he warns the moment that the torrent, the, the moment that the storm came, the moment that difficult things happen in our lives, that house collapsed and its destruction was complete. That if we don't hear Jesus' words and put them into action, we will be like that house. We will collapse. That's a huge warning for you and I. A huge warning. You can't do it on your own. I know because I've tried and it just doesn't work. Jesus offers us hope. Jesus offers you hope and life if you would hear his words and put them into action. Practice them. It's not always easy, but it isn't meant to be easy because when we obey Jesus, we can't do it out of our own strength. We have to rely on him, the teacher, the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives us to work it through us, to give us the strength. So would you hear Jesus' words inviting you to listen to him, inviting you to follow after him, inviting you to put his words into practice? Let's go to the last slide. And here are the questions I want you to think about. What have you heard from God through prayer, the Bible, and or today's sermon? What is something that you've heard? I want you to take a minute to think about that. What has God been speaking to you? Is there something in your character that needs to change? A bad habit that you've been keeping on going, 
even though you know you probably shouldn't. Is there one person that you just can't seem to get along with? And God is saying you need to forgive them and choose to be at peace with them. Are there any of the fruit of the Spirit that you are seriously lacking right now? If you don't know what they are, I'll tell you right now. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness. Wait. Goodness. <laughs> faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Is there one that you have to work on? And then the other question is, how can you act? How can you act to respond and obey what he has said to you? What is something practical that you can do to show that you are going to make a difference? To take out the garbage without being asked or complaining. Maybe that's it. To speak kindly about other people instead of bad-mouthing them. Maybe it's just simply to build up a habit of reading the Bible every day and praying. Whatever it is, Jesus wants to do this in you. So let's give it to him. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, would you continue to speak to our hearts about how you want us to hear you and obey you. And how about we confess that we are weak and we need help. We are not strong. We can't do this on our own. We need your help. So come, Holy Spirit, empower us. Help us to follow after you. Help us to be trained up in your way. Help us to be like the wise man and not the foolish man. Oh Lord, we don't want to be destroyed. We want to be built up. And we want to be people who help build others up and following after you. Forgive us for the ways that we have struggled and failed and renew our hearts. Thank you that you do forgive us and that you invite us into a new moment, a new day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's close off today with a song, Our God and Our Teacher. Okay, not muted. Okay, it's good. So let's worship.
our God. receive this blessing church oh church may we be people who go to Jesus asking him to help us to see asking him to remove our blindness may we go to him as students longing to learn from the teacher and willing to hear his voice hear his words and act on them to put them into practice in our lives and in doing so, may we be transformed to be more and more like Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bless you. Have a good week. And next week, uh, we'll see you again. And uh, Pastor Iggy will be back. And we'll welcome him back. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.